Uh, I will talk about the effects of uh, fixation with formaldehyde and paraformaldehyde, um, which is actually known for a while. But uh, first, have a look at the, um, the different reagents. Uh, just want to highlight here that there's a, a reaction between uh, paraformaldehyde and formaldehyde, uh, which uh, interchange them, so there will be an equilibrium. So that means the uh, way of fixation is very similar, and the effect that we will see is also similar. But uh, first of all, look back in history, what's done on that topic. So here <clears throat> is a paper from uh, 1969, uh, which was uh, focusing on uh, the amount of phospholipids you can extract from uh, red uh, hypothalamus. Uh, depending on uh, whether the cells are fixed or unfixed. And what you can see uh, here is that the amount of uh, phospholipids, and, uh, depending on the type, is very different. In uh, some cases, it doesn't show up uh, if it's fixed, and then the amount of uh, the different uh, phospholipids is uh, different depending on, on the fixation of whether the cells are not fixed. Uh, <clears throat> another more historical uh, article for the uh, formaldehyde uh, fixation is from uh, 1985. And in that paper, they were focusing on the differences in uh, sizes of nuclei and uh, cells uh, with or without fixation. And uh, within that article, you can also find an image that shows blebs coming out of the membrane and they are consisting actually uh, of membrane material and uh, liquids uh, from the inside of the cell. So how does it look like um, with today's techniques? It's that, that's more or less the typical uh, experiment I was doing for that, uh, taking images uh, from cells before and after the fixation process. As you can see here, even after 30 seconds after the treatment of uh, paraformaldehyde, you can see bloods coming up, uh, especially on the top uh, of uh, the image. Uh, on the third uh, image on the very right side, after five minutes, they are much larger, so uh, much easier to identify. There's, uh, <clears throat> that effect is not very cell dependent. Uh, you can see here, I've done that uh, with uh, Joker cells as well as with Hida cells. The cell line was uh, using at the uh, beginning and the uh, first slide I was showing there uh, from T93 T cells. Um, the difference between paraformaldehyde and formaldehyde treatment isn't large. You can see in the, uh, those images where fixed uh, 293 T cells with formaldehyde instead of paraformaldehyde that those blebs are showing up as well, but they are not as big as they were in the image before. But you can also see that the shape uh, and the inner interior of the cells are, are changing quite a bit. So because fixation is a well interesting matter for us, especially for high C people or for uh, electron mic microscopy, on uh, fluorescent straining, uh, I found it interesting to, inv I guess, to investigate that a little bit more. There's a little video playing here. Um, you will see on the left upper corner on the cell uh, that uh, lab is showing up. I hope I can highlight that over there. And you can see as well on the bottom that those blebs are swimming around so they got loose uh, from the cells at some point. The next slide shows again uh, fixation with uh, paraformaldehyde, which I've done. And here I try to compute the volume of the cell and uh, the volume of the blep that's shown here. And I try to estimate the volumes and it turned out that uh, those labs, in that case, it has a vol volume percentage between 11 and uh, 19 percent. 
I have to admit, that's an extreme case. Even though I used just 1% of uh, paraformaldehyde, which I uh, put into the medium, since paraformaldehyde or formaldehyde will uh, sink down to the ground, the actual concentration on the cells will be much higher than that 1% that I uh, mentioned here in the slide. You, will all, you, you could also say, that I'm just uh, looking at the worst example and on the high, uh, biggest lab that I can find, which is partially true because um, to make you aware of that there might be a problem or there is a problem, uh, I want to show an extreme case. Anyways, if you zoom a little bit further out on the very left side on that slide, you can see the same plane that I've shown before from the calculation of the volumes. And then I was uh, going up in Z to show that, uh, which those blebs unfortunately uh, not do, that, <clears throat> that they're not just showing up in the plane of uh, the cells, but they are actually surrounding the cells. So the uh, image in the middle and uh, on the left side that's uh, going higher and higher in Z, and you can see that uh, those huge uh, blobs are around the cells. Now, I have to tell you a little bit about the uh, way I was taking those images. Uh, as you can see, they have uh, lots of contrast, and uh, you see actually more things than you used to with uh, regular bright field imaging. I was using, um, a holographic uh, microscope. So that microscope measures the refractive index uh, on a hundred different angles and then recomputes a hologram of those cells. Uh, the technique actually allows me to do uh, the fixation under a microscope, which is usually not too easy with uh, common um, microscopes. And I also uh, need to tell you that the grayscales that we are seeing in the images are actually refractive indices that we were measuring. So on that slide, there are different refractive indices highlighted. And you can see that uh, there's a huge difference between uh, the refractive indices of the cells and especially the interior of the cells, including the nucleus. Um, before and after the fixation. Because, well, you might say as soon as you drop uh, paraform aldehyde into a liquid, the refractive index of the medium will change. So I measured that and it turned out that the change is there, but on the very low end. That's actually about the uh, resolution that microscope has in terms of the refractive index. So now I have to tell you a story I like a lot. Uh, since I'm working uh, with adjusting of, um, the refractive index of the medium for microscopy a lot, I thought at some point I could enhance my images by uh, adjusting the refractive index of uh, my medium. You usually use uh, uh, stuff called OptiPrep. And um, all of a sudden, I noticed that I could suppress uh, the, those bubble, uh, bleb, blebs from coming up. On the right upside, you can see the main ingredients of the OptiPrep, which is idioxanol. And uh, in that structure, you see easily that um, a very uh, hydrophilic one. So I believe that um, those reagents are going close to the membrane. And uh, if you have a look at the images, you can see that there's a very bright area around the cells. And if you know that um, as more bright the uh, pixels become, the values are raising, and that means in those areas, there's a much higher refractive index than in other areas. 
I believe that's the reason why uh, the OptiPrep solution was able to protect the cells from uh, going through that huge change. Here are my uh, common time points for that investigation. Like 30 seconds after the treatment, you can see that uh, dramatic changes uh, within the cells after fixation didn't happen. After five minutes, it still looks like the cells are behaving good. Yeah, life would be too nice if that would be a solution or a complete solution. So uh, looking at that slide, that's um, the same cells that we've seen before, but uh, keep in an incubator and a microscope for an, another 24 hours. And there I can see that after a time of about 11 to 12 hours, even there, those labs are showing up, even though they are very small. And a little bit um, more dramatic is uh, the image uh, 60, uh, 17 hours after the fixation. On one hand, in the red circles, you can see that there are more blebs are coming up. And the um, other point that scares me actually more for um, that pra practice is that it looks like that the cell that's marked with the arrows has more or less sucked up the OptiPrep that was surrounding. So you can see that um, here on the border of the cell, where we have obviously lots of OptiPrep left, that seems to went into the cells and are now that cell that's highlighted here keeps a lot of uh, high refractive indices or high refractive index areas, which I expect to be caused by OptiPrep going into the cells. So unfortunately, that might not completely solve the problem. While I was going through the different um, protocols that I could find for the fixation process with formaldehyde or paraformaldehyde, at some point I was uh, coming through a um, protocol that were talking about doing the whole fixation on ice. So I tried that as well. So here's the result, these are HeLa cells, and I use a um, regular white field microscope for that uh, investigation. And you can see the highlighted cells on the bottom with a red arrow uh, shows easily seen blebs. And on the right side, you can see an image of the membrane straining. And there, these blebs are also nicely visible. They're very small, so not too many concerns. And which is much more important, the other cells don't show these labs, which is actually good news. So the question here is, are these labs really, for, for that specific experiment, caused by the fixation, or are they actually caused by apoptosis before the fixation? That uh, image shows uh, from the same experiment uh, cells before <clears throat> the application of uh, formaldehyde and uh, the cell which is highlighted with the arrows actually is a dying cell. As you can see, it also forms very tiny blebs. That's a very common thing uh, for dying cells to do so. So since these images are just a week old, I still need to put some more effort into investigating where that's coming from. And um, there I'm already on the uh, summary or on the outlook. On one hand, the uh, images I've shown before with the 1% um, of um, formaldehyde or paraformaldehyde, which were added to the cells, we could see these blebs. Um, most of these cases were done by just pouring the formaldehyde or paraformaldehyde into the medium. And as I said before, that raises the um, concentration of uh, formaldehyde or paraformaldehyde 
uh, to a very high amount close to the salt. So right now I'm changing that experiment to just exchanging a, a pre-mixed uh, medium, which is of course not too easy under the microscope, but uh, it looks like I'm, I'm able to do it. Um, I will also uh, find a setup to investigate uh, fixation under four degrees um, continuously, so I don't need to uh, move the uh, microscope dish forth uh, and back, so I can have the same uh, felt and field of view, which should answer uh, the questions that are raised by the last two slides. And um, depending on whether I can still see those blebs and those changes, I would see a huge opportunity to adjust uh, uh, the use of the OptiPrep a little bit better, and um, maybe that will turn out as a solution to protect the cells uh, from the fixation or getting damaged by the fixation. Because uh, especially for uh, methods like uh, single molecule fish or electron microscopy, it uh, we, we want to figure things out uh, about distances, about uh, relations from uh, different proteins or different um, reactions in the cell. And then it becomes important that the cell has the same shape it has during its lifetime. Um, a conclusion would be for me right now, I would highly suggest to do fixation on uh, four degree or in a fridge. I know from the uh, two papers that I've shown at the very beginning that um, changes in temperature, of course, uh, causing a different um, diffusion um, reaction or a different uh, speed of uh, diffusion. Um, those two papers that were comparing are uh, physiological uh, 37 degrees to uh, 30 degrees Celsius, um, but they were working on, on very large tissues like uh, 20 millimeters, which uh, is not the case here. So with working with cells, we are much below a millimeter in uh, the usual case. So uh, the amount of time that we would need to add for fixing cells on four degrees shouldn't be too high. So is my recommendation. With that, I want to thank you, you for listening. Uh, my advisor is from uh, the Technical University of Darmstadt, uh, Christina Cardoso and uh, Alexander Löwe, as well as uh, David Grunwald, who is advising me uh, at the UMass Medical School, and of course, the whole uh, Grunwald lab. So thank you. and. Um, you're welcome to ask questions.